Hey friends, your kick drum is the heartbeat of your band, so I think it's really critical that we get a great kick drum sound. And in this video, I'll go over what I do in order to get a great kick drum sound, and I'll go over about the half a dozen or so microphones that I use regularly, or have in my mic cabinet, that I use for kick drum applications, and I'll give you a few thoughts on each of them. Your kick drum sound is going to be determined by three basic things. Your microphone placement, the microphone you choose, and the equalization that you dial up on the mixing board to uh, adjust the tone of that microphone, and some other settings on the board such as uh, gating and so forth. Probably the most important, I think, is the placement of the microphone in the drum. So if this was the resonant head, the front head of your kick drum, I would avoid placing the microphone in the dead center of it. Because the dead center is equidistant from the sides of the shell, and standing waves can build up. And so, depending upon the size of this shell, the uh, wavelengths involved, you're going to have some peaks and dips in the frequency response that could be pretty extreme. And so there will be certain tones that are accentuated or cut out of the mix, and uh, the drum will probably not sound very natural if you put the microphone right in the dead center of the shell. So I avoid that. So I try to move the mic off to the side or up or down a little bit so that the distance from the microphone to the edge of the shell kind of varies from any point to point on that shell. And you don't have resonances between the mic and the shell edges. The other thing that uh, you can adjust is how far into the shell the microphone is. Now some people will place that microphone, there will be a hole in the front head here, and they'll place the mic right in the hole. And I try to avoid that because if you place your hand near that hole while the drummer hits the kick drum, you'll notice that there's a pretty significant puff of air that comes through. And we know that if you have a microphone out in a windstorm, all that wind noise is just not going to sound good in the microphone. Now, usually the drum sounds are so much louder than the wind shuffing noise, it works. And sometimes you just simply don't have much of a choice and have to use that kind of placement because of the uh, physical factors involved as to what you can do with your microphone stand and the size of the mic, the size of the hole, and so forth. But if I have a choice, I will insert the microphone deep into the drum shell. And the closer I get to the beater head and away from the resonant head, i.e. the closer to the drummer, the more impact you're going to pick up, the more snappy the drum will sound. As I move the microphone back outward toward the front of the drum, toward the audience, toward the resonant head, away from the beater head, the uh, more deeper, boomier it will sound. So if the microphone is very close to the front head, you'll probably get a less distinct and much more boomy kick drum. If you move it toward the drummer and toward the beater head, it'll get much more defined and snappy sounding. Generally, I end up with a position that's about one third away from the beater head and two thirds away from the front of the drum. So I like the microphone to be placed pretty deep into the drum itself. So it's more snappy and a little bit less boomy. But depending upon the microphone, you can move back and forth and adjust to taste. So I'm off center and pretty deep into the shell is my preference in most cases with most drums. Of course, the drum itself matters a lot, and having the drum properly tuned is a, a big plus. So hopefully the drummer has taken care of those issues. Another thing that I find somewhat curious is that generally I find smaller drum kits are represented better in the PA system. I usually get really good sounding kick drum response out of a 20 inch kick drum. The 24 inch kick drums usually don't sound as good through the PA system and I don't feel that I'm sacrificing any deep bass with the 20 inch drum. Now obviously you know the drummer's going to choose whatever kit he likes and there's a lot to do with the look of it on stage but the smaller drum kits I often like the sound of better generally. Now when it comes to the mixer side of it, I can adjust the EQ to taste, and that varies depending upon which microphone it is. I keep in mind that the fundamental of the kick drum is probably around 80 to 100 hertz for most drums most of the time, and there isn't a whole lot of really useful stuff below about 40 hertz. 
and oftentimes cutting out some of that deep bass with a low-cut filter actually improves the sound of the drum. Now, of course, I want a lot of bottom end to the drum, so it's got some, you know, grunt to it. But keeping the super subsonic stuff in there often just muddies up the band mix. So you might want to consider rolling up a filter, depending upon the band, depending upon the sound you're looking for, maybe 30 hertz, maybe 40 hertz, and get rid of, getting rid of some of that super deep subsonic stuff. Like I say, the EQ curve is a, a matter of adjusting to taste. Generally speaking, um, as with all EQ, if I find that I'm dialing up a very large amount of boost or cut, I start questioning if that's a rational approach and if maybe I should move the microphone instead to get a better sound pickup rather than trying to fix it after the fact. And then other effects are often dialed in, particularly gates. If you want a more snappy sound out of the drum, you can adjust a gate so that it applies 10 dB or more of attenuation when the drum is quiet and only allows the drum sound to come through during the beater hit periods. So it would be a gate with a pretty fast attack and pretty fast release. So you get rid of the, uh, the resonant um, the sound of the drum after the drum hits occur. And I think that that sounds somewhat unnatural. On some rock acts, it works really well to bring out the punch of the kick drum. Um, other times, I prefer just a more natural drum sound. It depends upon the drum itself and how resonant it is. On that note, it's my preference to have some padding inside of the drum. Something like a blanket that uh, covers the bottom of the drum to pick up some of the various standing waves that build up inside of the shell. And I prefer to have that blanket touching both the front and back heads, both the beater and the resonant head, just to provide a little bit of damping so the drum doesn't ring too much. And generally speaking, personally, I'm not a huge fan of ringy drums because they tend to just muddy up the mix, in my opinion. But of course, like I say, every band's got its own sound, and uh, that's a question, you know, it's a matter of subjective art. So, you know, you do what you know how to do. As for the mics, I'll run through the mics that I use in terms of least favorite to most favorite and give you my thoughts on each one of them. There's a lot of mics out by major manufacturers that are designed particularly for drums, for kick drums, and other low-frequency instruments. And, of course, these microphones can be used on things other than just drums. For example, they may be effective on floor toms bass guitar, and other low-frequency instruments, but they're designed for kick drums. They're designed to handle the high pressures that are experienced within a kick drum, whereas some other microphones, <clears throat> um, like a condenser mic, would, would probably not tolerate the sound pressure levels within the drum. It's possible that the mic could distort or possibly even damage the capsule. If I don't have a drum-specific microphone, Sure 57 can work well. Now, I'll probably require some equalization at the board if I'm using a Sure 57 to bump the lows a little bit to make it really work well on the kick drum. But the Sure SM57 is a real workhorse of a microphone. It works well on just about everything. It can handle the high sound pressures that are experienced in a kick drum, and it does have low enough response that it can pick up the uh, sounds of a kick drum and reproduce it fairly well. So, Shure 57, if I don't have a real kick drum microphone, this is what I would go to. And you can use a 57 and get adequate sounding kick drum without much problem. So, uh, it's not the mic that I would choose, but if I didn't have the mic that I wanted, this would be my next option. Moving up from the 57 would be the AKG D112. Now, the D112 is probably the mic that I would pick least often for kick drum. The D112 has plenty of bass. It does have deep bass, but it has a very clicky high end to it, a very defined kick drum sound, um, a lot of high frequencies. I'm not sure if that's actually reflected in the frequency response graph that comes with the mic, but that's been my experience in use, is that you get a very articulate, clicky, um, high end out of your kick drum, which um, works for some metal acts, but I find it to be a little accentuated for most rock and country acts. And of course, you can use any mic 
and make it work with the application of a little EQ on the board. But I find the D112 to be a little brittle and hard sounding and uh, clicky. And if that's your sort of thing, maybe that's perfect for you. But for me, it's probably the mic that I would choose least for most of my rock and country acts. Like I say, there are some um, uh, harder metal acts where that might just be the ticket, but um, that's my experience. Moving up the list is the Shure Beta 52. This is a super common kick drum mic. It works great. I use it for both country and rock acts. My personal preference is I think it's a little bit more of a country drum sound than a rock drum sound, just in my mixes. It's got a big, soft, round sort of feeling to it. It has lots of deep bass. It doesn't have a particularly accentuated high end, but it does work very well, and um, I get great results out of it. I use it a lot for um, bands of all types, but that's probably the mic that I would reach for for a lot of country-type acts that want a big, round, thick kick drum sound Moving up the list to my next favorite mic would be the Electrovoice 868. I love the 868 because I think it's got a big bottom, it's got nice high end, and it's a pretty natural sounding mic. Um, some of the other mics I've mentioned have a particular accentuation to their sound, so the kick drum doesn't really sound like a natural kick drum, but it's impressive sounding and it works well. Well, the 868, I think brings a very natural sounding kick drum out, but also gives you that deep end and the attack. And um, all around, it's just a really great kick drum mic. It's one of my very favorites. Then moving up the list from that is the Shure Beta 91A. And this is a condenser boundary type microphone. Looks like this. It's a flat plate. It is directional, so this front end of it needs to be pointed at the beater side. And I really like this mic a lot. It's got deep bass, it's got great high-end definition, and um, it's got super easy placement. Just uh, slide this thing into the drum and let it sit on the floor of the shell um, on some of the padded blankets in there, point it toward the beater, and um, it's really easy. It uh, is super low profile, so you don't need a stand on stage. You just drop it inside of the shell. And I think it sounds fantastic. It's a really good mic. Um, some people will use this mic along with something like a Shure 52 or one of the other kick drum mics, because some of the other kick drum mics might have a little bit fatter bottom sound to it. But actually, I find that even just by itself, I get great response and great performance out of the Beta 91A. So this is one of my top contenders. I, I really like this guy a lot. And uh, what I like most about it is how easy it is to use. I don't need to stand on stage. I can just drop it in the shell and boom, I'm done. Um, it is a condenser mic, so and it's got its own preamplifier built inside. So it does require phantom power from the board. No big deal. And then my favorite kick drum mic is the Audix D6, this guy. I think that the Audix D6 is not really a natural sounding mic. It has an accentuated bottom end. It's got a dip in the mid-range and um, plenty of high end to it as well. And I think that this mic for most rock and roll acts makes the drum sound just fantastic. It's got just a lot of power and punch to it. It's got good articulation and definition, um, big fat bottom end. And of course you can tweak these things around with the EQ on your board. But I find that the Audix D6 provides a really great kick drum sound. And so, in most cases, with most bands, this is the mic that I would probably grab first for the best possible sound. A close second would be this Shure. And I might choose the Shure only because it is simpler and easier and I don't need a stand on stage. I can just put one cable going into the drum and it looks really clean. Uh, both of these mics sound fantastic. And I don't think you'll go wrong with any of them. And, and, and having said that, I don't think you'll go wrong with any of the mics that I mentioned. They're all great mics. And they can all be made to provide a really good sounding kick drum with just a little bit of tweaking on the board. So those are my thoughts on kick drum microphones and 
how you can get a great kick drum sound. I think it's really important to have a strong kick drum sound to the band. Uh, personally, I don't mix it, so it's super accentuated. I mean, there are some sound guys who have an overpowering kick drum sound that is really unnatural sounding. I, I personally, if I have a choice, prefer a fairly natural band sound that is in balance, but I want to have really clean, clear, articulate, and powerful sounding instruments. And uh, the kick drum is certainly one of the most important because without a good kick drum, the band just doesn't have a heartbeat and people won't want to get out and dance. So I wish you good luck with those tips. And if you're looking to purchase a kick drum microphone, any of the ones I mentioned, I think would be a great choice. Um, like I say, if it was me choosing a general purpose kick drum mic, I'd probably go for the D6 first. That Shure Beta 91A is a second choice. Sure, the Electro Voice 868 is fantastic. And then the Shure Beta 52 in that order would be my personal preference. But like I say, they're all fantastic mics and you'll do well with any of them. So I hope that you have great shows. I hope that your kick drum slams and uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you again soon on another episode of Sound Advice. My name is Barry. I'm a sound engineer in the Minneapolis, St. Paul, Twin Cities area. And if your band is in need of help with a sound engineer, or you'd like some advice on sound, I'd be glad to help you out. Please uh, drop me a note down below, and um, I'll do what I can for you. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you again soon.